This conference, this conference will now be recorded. The different types of biosafety cabinets, uh, as well as some other enclosures that, that are not protective. So, uh, the first point is, uh, is purchasing. Uh, actually, uh, we'll, we'll see how to choose the best biosafety cabinet according to our needs. Before that, we'll also wonder, do we really need a biosafety cabinet or should we per perhaps work differently? And then we'll also see the different options, the different possibilities we have to, uh, to, uh, to consider when purchasing a cabinet. The second part will be on installing, uh, especially for class two biosafety cabinets, which are much more sensitive to air movements, for instance. And in that case, we need to be particularly careful about the location of the biosafety cabinet. And the last part will be on servicing. That means the verification, we we'll call that, for instance, field certification, and also the maintenance and housekeeping on, of biosafety cabinets. Uh, this will not be uh, the point of view, uh, the point of view of, a, of an engineer who has to do the work. It's really helping the users to understand why it is important to do it and what they need to require from the engineers. So, uh, purchasing a biosafety cabinet. The first question we have to ask ourselves is do we really need a biosafety cabinet? For instance, uh, could you please shut down the microphones? Um, so, for instance, if we only do clean work and don't, we don't use any uh, infectious agent, in that case, we don't necessarily we don't need a biosafety cabinet. We don't need to protect ourselves if we if we do that kind of work. It's true, for instance, for media preparation. In that case, uh, you, you, it would be better to have a laminar flow bench, which will protect the product much better. You don't need a biosafety cabinet for that. If you do some uh, preparation for PCR, if you do uh, only handle uh, DNA or RNA, you should have another type of cabinet too. You don't need a biosafety cabinet for that. So in that case, a laminar flow bench or a PCR cabinet would, would do the job much better and also at a lower cost. Also, if you work in a BSL2 lab, so where there is some biological risk, but if you do some work where there is no risk of infectious aerosol, you don't necessarily need a biosafety cabinet too. For instance, if you work on petri dishes, only on solid uh, items and so on, with no risk of aerosol, in that case, you don't necessarily need a biosafety cabinet. In that case, you could work on the bench with a minimum uh, of precautions. So clearly, you will need a biosafety cabinet. If you are, you could be exposed to infectious aerosols. So when, when concerning the purchase of a biosafety cabinet, we always need to really look at, at our actual needs and also the risk we might be exposed to. So if we work in a BSL-2 or in a BSL-3 lab, so labs where laboratories where there is some biological risk, in that case, you could wonder, do I need a class one or a class two biosafety cabinet? In this talk, I will not consider class three biosafety cabinets because they are normally not need in, in most labs. It's the need for class three biosafety cabinet is extremely rare. It's for very high risk situations and they are not so easy to use and so on. So normally we don't need that. So um, what about class one or class two? So most generally, we also need some product protection. And so in that case, we'll tend to purchase a class two biosafety cabinet because I, remember, I remind you, that's the type of cabinet that is designed both for product protection and for your own personal protection. Still, uh, we should remember, for instance, that class one biosafety cabinet are, offer, offer a better personal protection. So it's more robust and it will protect you better. They're also easier to use. They are easier to test and maintain. And because of that, they are less expensive, not only when you purchase them, but also for all the running costs, they will be less expensive. Also, uh, they can be ducted to, to the outside to create very easily some negative pressure, which is not possible with most, uh, most uh, class two biosafety cabinet. And they can still offer some product protection. They are not designed for that, but if you use good microbiological 
practices, my good microbiological techniques, you can reach a quite good level of, of, of product protection. So even if class 2 BMI safety cabinets are the ones which are most generally used with, if we need some product protection also, uh, class 1 biosafety cabinet can be a good option, especially if there is a high level of risk uh, and especially if you don't have much resource to, to purchase the equipment, but also to maintain it after that. Then the next question, what type of class 2, bio, if you choose a bio, class 2 biosafety cabinet, what type of class 2 biosafety cabinet? Uh, an A2, which is the usual type, or some type of, uh, of B cabinet? Actually, the normal class 2 A2 biosafety cabinet should be preferred in more than 99% of the cases. It is a situation we find, for instance, in most Western countries, in Europe, in the UK, and so on and so on. Uh, and, and also in most other countries that, than Pakistan. In, in the US, you have slightly more uh, class, uh, class, uh, type B, B cabinets because uh, they are almost mandatory in, uh, in BSL3 labs. And in Pakistan, for some reason, there are many uh, class 2 biosafety cabinets, uh, class 2 B biosafety cabinets. Actually, according to a, uh, a survey that was done three years ago, 50% uh, of the institution in Pakistan, they claim they have a, a, a class 2B cabinet, which is very surprising because in all other countries, it, it, they are extremely rare. So normally you should not need a, a type B cabinet. The normal A2 should be sufficient. The only exception where you would need a type B cabinet is if you use infectious biological agents together at the same time as volatile, uh, vol volatile toxic molecules. In that case, you, you, you should, uh, uh, type B could be preferred, but it's the only so, so, uh, situation actually. If you use other type of, of toxic uh, chemicals, but which are not volatile, so they don't evaporate, they, they stay in a liquid form, in that case, uh, uh, the normal uh, A2 cabinet would be sufficient to protect you. Why? Because if you if you do some spill, if you create an aerosol, the chemical molecules will be in the aerosol and they will be stopped by the HEPA filtrate. The only thing that escapes the HEPA filters are molecules. And so it's the only situation actually where you might want to, to use a, a, a type B cabinet. And if you are familiar with a number of laboratory operations that we use in, in, in biosafety, in, uh, uh, in medical science, in biotechnology, you will notice that there are very few applications where you use volatile toxic uh, molecules together with infectious substances. So, uh, as a summary, when you, you need to choose the most appropriate type of cabinet, you really need to look at, at your needs, the type of, uh, linked to the type of activity, and also the health and safety risk. Do you use volatile hazardous chemicals or volatile radioisotopes or not? And what is also the balance between biological risk and other risk? So you need to ask yourself those questions. You also need to take into consideration the need for quality. So do we need product protection? Uh, it, it, because in, in that case, we would really have a, a major issue. If, for instance, we lose samples that are unique and so on, we might want to have the best po possible product protection. Or is just protection, uh, product protection nice to have? If we lose the samples, that's not too bad because we, we, we had some aliquoting, we have a double, we have more samples and so on. So you really need to think about that. And then also, if you need product protection, in that case, you could also think about other needs, uh, other ways to ensure uh, product protection. Uh, also using normal practices under uh, class one biosafety cabinet, for instance. So again, with respect to quality versus biosafety protection, you also need to kind of weigh both sides and, and decide according to this. So again, you always need to consider the actual needs linked to your activities and the risk from your activities. 
Uh, another aspect that we also need to take into consideration already when purchasing the cabinet is uh, the, some operational aspect and mainly in relation with the sustainability of, of, of your cabinet. If you plan to purchase a complex cabinet, a class 2 uh, A2 or even more a class 2 B cabinet, in that case you need to be sure that you have the technical and financial means to operate those cabinets properly, but also to check them and to maintain them uh, over time. So it's just just for a few months. It's had, it's had be, it shall be for years. And so, if you if you think of purchasing that, you need to have that those capabilities. Technically, and technically that means that you might need to to have some uh, some service providers or some contractors that would do it, and also the financial capabilities to pay for that. If you don't have those capabilities, in that case, your cabinet will not stay in a good shape for a very long time. It may not protect you anymore. And in that case, it would be better to consider another option. Uh, you see at the bottom of the page uh, a study from Southeast Asia. And in that study, uh, the authors, they realized that between 50 and 70 percent of the biosafety cabinets, mostly class two biosafety cabinets, are not tested regularly, are not tested, are not tested at all, and the class two biosafety cabinet that were checked show major fails that compromise their safety of use. We don't have such statistics for Pakistan, but from the few labs I saw and from information I hear and so on, it is probably uh, the same kind of situation in Pakistan. So it is very important when you consider purchasing cabinet, you should always see, check if you are you will be able to to maintain them, to check them on a regular basis. Otherwise, after some years, they will not protect you, and they might expose you without you even know. I made this table to compare the main types of of, uh, of cabinets, so class one, class two. Uh, a2, so the usual type of uh, class 2 uh, cabinet, class 2B, 1 and 2, and class 3 cabinets. And you can see the difference there. For instance, with respect to protection from infectious aerosols, so that's the main purpose of biosafety cabinets, you see, for instance, that class 1 and class 3 cabinets are more protective than the class 2. Class 2 cabinets they are a kind of compromise between product protection and personal protection. Then if you look at the protection from uh, volatile substances, in that case, you see that the best, the most effective in that case would be a class, uh, a class 2B cabinet. Um, definitely a lot of class 2 normal, but the class 1 cabinet, if ducted to the outside, will also be very efficient from that purpose. For that, for that, for that purpose. And it's also the, the, the case of a class 3. If it's connected to the outside, it will also be very good from, from that level. So if you cannot afford a class two, for instance, because a class two B because of, of the cost, because of the technical aspects which are extremely complex, you could purchase a class one. And in that case, if you connect it to the outside, you will have a very good protection, including for from volatile substances. Product protection, so class two are designed for that, and class three can be very good if there is a laminar flow inside. They don't always have that, so in that case, you, you could have some cross-contamination. Class one, are, they are not designed for that. It depends mainly on the practice. Robustness, again, class one, the most, the most efficient from that point of view, and also class three. Ease of operation, class one, very easy to operate. Class three, very difficult. I mean, it's it's cumbersome, ergonomics is not good and so on. And in between you have the, uh, the class two cabinets. Then the cost, the less expensive at purchase and mainly at uh, in, in installation is class one. And then you have the class two and class uh, type B, for instance, is much more expensive. And of course, class, uh, class three. And you see, you, if you look at the operating cost, the running cost, so that means the energy, the uh, maintenance, checking, and so on. Again, uh, the class two and class three cabinets are, are more expensive.
one thing which is very important when you purchase a class uh, biosafety cabinet, and that's independent from, from, from the type of cabinet that you prefer, you need to be sure that it is protected. And the only way to be, be sure is that you check that they are certified against one of these standards. The main one are European standards and the, uh, the American standards. But the American standards is only for class two biosafety cabinets, class two A and B, but only for class two biosafety cabinets. So if you purchase a class one or a class three, in that case, you should let, look at the European standards or, or, or one of the others. Also, when, when you purchase such a, a cabinet, you will need to, uh, to ask yourself uh, some, some other questions. Uh, do, do I need some subtype of connection to exhaust the, uh, the air taken away from, from the cabinet? What dimension should be, uh, should be good for, for activity? Uh, also, we need to be sure that it's not too, too large for the place we, we have in the lab. Do we need first uh, a stand and so on and, and some other use, useful option? Also, you need to consider as a, a, an option the availability and the cost of competent verification and maintenance service. This is very important. If you don't have that, if you don't already have an idea where to, uh, of where you to find those services, you might be in trouble when the cabinet is installed. My recommendation there is that when you purchase a cabinet, it's really to, uh, to ask the supplier, so the people who sell the cabinet, if they can offer that service. And if not, to ask them what they consider as a competent contractor that would offer the service. And we'll see installation. We need to check the cabinet at installation. You should already start either with the supplier or with that, or with that recommended uh, contractor. So uh, the first option, and that's an important option that we need to, to think of, is uh, the, the option of, of the exhaust. You could have a free exhaust in the lab, and that's what is generally done uh, at, uh, in BSL-2 and BSL-3 labs, uh, except in the US, as uh, I repeat myself, but normally our ducting is mandatory at uh, BSL-3 in the US. And free exhaust in the lab can be done with class one, class two, and class three biosafety cabinets. Actually, except for class two B, all the other cabinets are made to release their air in the lab. So you don't need anything else with those cabinets in principle. Then you have two types of connection. One is a thimble or canopy connection. Uh, in that case, you see, you see that picture here, the upper one. You see that that's a cabinet you have, and you, cannot have, you have a kind of hood above the cabinet with some space in between. And, and, and then you can have the air go, coming from the cabinet being exhausted, but you also exhaust some air from, from the lab. The second type is the hard ducted connection. And you see that in that case, that's a cabinet, and you have all the air which is exhausted to the cabinet that goes to from tight, airtight duct to the outside. Free exhaust in the lab, I tell you that for class one, class two A, and class three biosafety cabinet, that's the standard solution. It's the best possible solution. It's easy to install. You have some flexibility and so on. So that's the normal situation, I would say. So it's easy and safe in most situations. And it's also suitable for most, probably 99% of the uh, of the biological activities. So that you can really consider that uh, that as the normal way to do. The main drawback is that if you have some volatile substance, even occasionally, and even if they are not tox toxic, it can be odors and so on, in that case, uh, you, will, you will have them in the lab. So if you want to get rid of those, uh, in that case, you should decide for some kind of, 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 um, of exhaust. Also, a benefit of exhaust is that you eliminate the heat from, uh, from the biosafety cabinet. So those connections, there are two types, I, uh, I said. So the first one is canopy or timber connection, uh, the same picture here, and you see how it works. So that's the air from the cabinet going through the HEPA filter. And then you have, you have the, the kind of hood which is above that. And you see that the air from the cabinet will mainly go to that part, and also, it will suck some of the air of the lab through the, that, those openings. 
So the main benefit of that is that it eliminates uh, all types of volatile substance you would have in the cabinet, including others, for instance, and also evacuate most of the heat from the cabinet. The cabinet, biosafety cabinet, produces quite a lot of heat. Most of your labs already have there is some heat inside of the lab because of the climate and so on, because of the other instrument. So if you can get rid of that heat immediately, uh, it reduces the need for cooling, for instance, and that's of course interesting. One thing also, uh, the salespeople will tell you that they have a nice canopy connection that uh, is made for the cabinet. Actually, you don't need that. You can make that yourself. I mean, it's it's easy to make. You just have to have some kind of food that directs the air to the top, uh, uh, to the outside. So it does need to be uh, made by, by the supplier of the cabinet. Any type of hood, even a kitchen hood in some way would, would do the job. And there is no major drawback. That's easy to do and it doesn't have any impact on the cabinet. Uh, of course, you need to, uh, to have the exhaust. The only problem that could be is that it would be blocked or if you have a fan there, it would, it would stop. In that case, you would still your cabinet would still work properly. Uh, so the air instead of going up would go like that in the lab, but and that's not it's not a major issue. So this is a very very efficient uh, solution which can be recommended in many cases. The second type of connection is hard ducted. In that case, you already have the top of the cabinet, and that you have a connection to either directly to the exhaust. Oh, sorry. To the exhaust, but you need an extraction fan there uh, most of the time, at least with uh, type B cabinets, or to the ventilation system. Both can be worked. In this case, you need to have the, uh, a, uh, a ducting which is comp completely compatible with uh, with your cabinet. That means that most of the time it has to be the ducting which is supplied by the manufacturer of your cabinet. So it has a cost. The benefit of that is that you can even use toxic uh, volatile substances here that will be uh, evacuated to the outside. In class one and cl class three cabinets, it's quite easy to do uh, you, and you don't necessarily need to have a fan. If it's a class two B cabinet, you need to have an additional fan here. Thus, again, additional cost. The main problem with this is that if there is a blockage, at the level of the uh, exhaust duct. For instance, if uh, the air conditioning, if it's connected to the air conditioning to the, uh, and uh, the fan of the air conditioning blocks, in that case, the, your cabinet will not work properly. You will stop exhausting the air from the cabinet. If it's directed to the outside and some bird comes there and installs a nest in that ducting, in that case, you will also lose the possibility to use your cabinet. You, it, will, it won't work properly anymore. So, our ducting normally not needed. You can use it easily with class one and class three biosafety cabinets, but with class two A, you should not do it. And class two B, again, it will be complicated. You will need a lot of engineering for that. It will, and you might have problems of balance and so on. It's quite difficult to maintain that. Uh, there are a number of, of uh, class uh, type B cabinets in Pakistan and, and some are not, pro and many are not working properly to the point that at some point, when, for instance, when revamping the, the lab and so on, they are replaced by the class two A2 cabinets. So really it's not an option, except if you absolutely need uh, that type of cabinet. Other considerations, uh, the size, and so you need to look at the size inside of the cabinet. The standard is uh, 1.2 meter or four feet. Uh, smaller is usually not useful because you need a, a minimum of, of materials inside, and larger is not recommended because you have you are more, it's more sensitive to air flows. It's only if you need, for instance, to work uh, two people working together at the cabinet. In that case, it might be more useful to have a wider one. Always be careful of, about the external dimension because some cabinets have quite thick walls and in that case you might just, okay, we have 1.2 uh, uh, meter, we can install the cabinet, but sometimes it won't be possible. So you need to also check this. And then other options, the stand. It's, uh, it is 
uh, better than on the bench top, mostly for ergonomic reasons. Alarms uh, with new cabinets, you don't have to worry about that because it's so uh, it's built in. The two other points, electrical outlets and ports for the provision of utilities like gas, uh, water and so on, that inside the cabinet, that's very interesting. It avoids having tubings or, or wires uh, entering the cabinet from, from the front, which would disturb the, the air balance. So those two recommendations, if you will need some electricity inside of your cabinet, if you need some water or some gases and so on, it's recommended to have them provided, for instance, on the side of the cabinet. So you need some specific, specific ports for that. Armrests, they are recommended for long work sessions, for in some diagnostic labs, people uh, spend hours working at, at, uh, at their cabinet. In that case, it's useful that they can put their arms on something for ergonomic reason. And if there is no armrest, in that case, they might put their arm on the grill which is not good at all from a protection point of view. And then UV lights. Most suppliers recommend UV lights. Most experts in biosafety or in quality don't recommend UV lights. Usually now it's not recommended anymore. But the salespeople will try to convince you that you need them. We can discuss that uh, later if you want. So now I will let uh, Fukan uh, summarize this part in Urdu, and then I will see if there are some some questions uh, specific to this uh, this first part. So uh, Fukan, are you ready? Yeah. Thank you, Philip. Uh, that was really nice discussion. Assalamu alaikum. So, now we will slides ka in the slides. So, we are doing this in the same way. We are doing biosafety cabinet. We are doing this in the same way. So, we are doing this in the same way. We are doing this in the same way. We are doing this in the same way. We are doing तो इसका जवाब हमें किस तरह से मिलेगा इसका जवाब हमें इस तरह से मिलेगा कि हमें अपनी वर्क एक्टिविटीज को जो हम काम करते हैं उसको देखना होगा अगर हम सिर्फ मीडिया बनाने के लिए बायोसेफ्टी कैबिनेट खरीद रहे हैं तो ये बेहतर ऑप्शन नहीं है इससे बेहतर ये है कि हम एक लेमिनार फ्लो हो बेंच या कोई क्लीन बेंच खरीद या हमारा काम उसमें अगर कोई ऐसा एरोसोलाइजेशन का प्रोसेस नहीं है यानी कि जहां बुखारात नहीं बन रहे तो उसके लिए भी हमें बायोसेफ्टी कैबिनेट की जरूरत नहीं है बल्कि हम वो काम आसानी से अपनी बेंच पे कर सकते हैं हमेशा इस बात को हमें मद्देनजर रखना होगा कि हमारा हकीकतन हमें जरूरत किस चीज की और हमें खतरा किस चीज से अब हम बात करेंगे कि कौन सा बायोसेफ्टी कैबिनेट जैसा हमें पता है कि इसकी तीन क्लासेस मौजूद हैं क्लास 1 2 और 3 कौन सा हमारे लिए हमारे काम के लिए मुनासिब है सो क्लास 3 को हम इसलिए आसानी से रूल आउट कर सकते हैं कि ये बहुत ही नायाब सूरत हाल में या कोई ऐसा खतरा जो कि बहुत Exotic हो जो के exist ना करता हो usually इसके लिए कोई therapeutics ना और life threatening हो तो बहुत ही high risk situation में class three by safety cabinet use होता है जो के बहुत नायाब और rare situation होती है class two by safety cabinet हमें उस वक्त जरूरत होती है उसकी जब हमें अपनी product का तहाफ़ुस हमारे लिए सबसे important हो यानी हम कोई ऐसा काम करने जिसमें हमारी product बहुत important है तो वहाँ पर आप class two by safety cabinet use कर सकते हैं Class 1 by safety cabinet, which usually we ignore, we don't give any importance to it, but you can give a lot of options to it. Like this, you can use it in a good way, you can give it 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 a good way, you can use it in a good way, it's user friendly, it's less than the cost, and you can give it a good way, which you can compare it with it. अपने काम के हवाले से देखना होगा कि आपका काम की नौयत क्या है और उस हवाले से फिर आप इनमें से तीनों क्लासेस में से कोई एक क्लास सिलेक्ट कर सकते हैं अपने काम के हवाले से। अगर हम क्लास टू को देखें तो इसमें फर्दर दो किस्म के बाय सेफ्टी कैबिनेट मौजूद हैं ए एंड बी तो ज्यादातर केसेस में ए को प्रेफर किया जाता है और वो हम देख लेते हैं कि क्यों प्रेफर किया जाता है लेकिन सवाल ये पैदा होता है कि बी को कहाँ प्रेफर किया जाएगा सो बी को प्रेफर किया जाएगा जब आप ऐसे 
کمپاؤنڈ کے ساتھ کام کر رہے ہیں جو کہ والٹائل ہیں جو کہ اتنے مستحکم نہیں ہیں اور آسانی کے ساتھ بخارات کی صورت میں ریلیز ہو جاتے ہیں یا ان کی جو بدبو ہوتی ہے یا اس کی آڈر یا اسمیل جو ہوتی ہے وہ آپ برداشت نہیں کر سکتے تو وہاں پر آپ کلاس بھی آپ کو آپ کے لیے زیادہ بہتر آپشن ہے کمپیئر ٹو کلاس اے ادر وائز نائنٹی نائن پرسینٹ کیسز میں جیسے اس میں لکھا گیا ہے کلاس اے جو ہے وہ آپ کو زیادہ بہتر پروٹیکشن تینوں حوالے سے اور آپ کے کام کے حوالے سے دے سکتا ہے اور فائدہ اس کے ساتھ کیا ہے کہ اس کی انجینئرنگ اتنی مشکل نہیں ہے آسانی سے خریدا جا سکتا ہے اس کی کاسٹ کم ہے اور جب اس کی مینٹیننس یا جو اس کی دیکھ بھال کی کاسٹ ہے جو ہم آگے ڈسکس کریں گے وہ بھی کم ہے اس کے علاوہ بائی سیفٹی کیبنٹ خریدتے ہوئے اس کی خریداری میں ہمیں جو باقی چیزیں جو ہیں وہ جو سوال ہم نے ابھی پیچھے ڈسکس کیے ہیں کہ ہمیں یہ دیکھنا ہے کہ ہمارے کام میں اگر کوئی والٹائل کمپاؤنڈ ہے تو ہم کلاس بی کی طرف جا سکتے ہیں اگر ہمارے کام میں ایسے کوئی والٹائل کمپاؤنڈ اور کیمیکل یوز نہیں ہوتے ہیں تو پھر ہم کلاس اے کو پریفر کر سکتے ہیں ایک اور اہم نقطہ جو مد نظر رکھنا ہے کہ اس کی فعالیت اور اس کی سسٹینیبلٹی حوالے سے کیا ہمارے پاس تمام مالی اور تکنیکی صلاحیتیں موجود ہیں بائی سیفٹی کیبنٹ کو خریدنے کے بعد استعمال کرنے کی اور پھر اس کی دیکھ بھال کرنے کی کیونکہ خریدنا ایک چیز ہوتا ہے اور اس کے بعد اس کی تنصیب اور اس کا استعمال اور اس کی فعالیت اور اس کی دیکھ بھال جو ہے وہ ایک اور چیز ہوتی ہے تو ہمیں یہ بھی خریداری کرتے ہوئے یہ چیز مد نظر رکھنی چاہیے کہ ہمیں اس کے بعد جب ایک دفعہ ہم خرید لیں گے تو اس کے ساتھ جو ہم بعد میں کام کریں گے اس میں ہمیں کیا کیا مشکلات درپیش آ سکتی ہیں یہ ایک سیلف ایکسپلینیٹری ٹیبل ہے میں اس کی زیادہ ڈیٹیل میں نہیں جاؤں گا اگر ہم دیکھیں تو اس میں آپ کے پاس کالم میں مختلف آپشن اویلیبل ہیں جہاں پہ آپ اگر سمپل اگر ہم پہلے کالم کو دیکھیں جہاں پہ بات کی جا رہی ہے ایروسولس کی یعنی کہ پرسنل اور انوائرمنٹل پروٹیکشن کی تو آپ دیکھ سکتے ہیں کہ سب سے زیادہ جو امپورٹنٹ ہے وہ کلاس ون اور تھری اور ٹو تھوڑے سے کم ہے ٹھیک ہے اگر پروڈکٹ پروٹیکشن پہ دیکھتے ہیں تو ہم کلاس ون اور تھری تھوڑے سے کم ہے اور کلاس ٹو جو ہیں وہ زیادہ امپورٹنٹ ہیں پھر والٹائل میں آپ دیکھ سکتے ہیں تو آپ یہ کمپیئر کر سکتے ہیں آپ کے پاس یہ سلائڈس اویلیبل ہوں گی اوپلی تو آپ اس کو دیکھ سکتے ہیں ٹیبل کو بائی سیفٹی کیبنٹ جب آپ خرید رہے ہوتے ہیں تو میک شور کریں آپ یہ یقین کر لیں کہ آپ بائیو سیفٹی کیبنٹ ہی خرید رہے ہیں تو بائیو سیفٹی کیبنٹ کا پتہ کیسے چلے گا کہ وہ کسی معیار کے مطابق ہوگا کسی پیمانے پہ بنا ہوگا یہاں پہ مختلف پیمانے یا معیار دیے ہوئے ہیں ایک یورپ کا اسٹینڈرڈ ہے یا معیار ہے جسے ای این ون ٹو فور سکس نائن کہتے ہیں ایک امیرکن معیار ہے جسے این ایس ایف این اے این ایس آئی بھی کہتے ہیں آسٹریلیا کا ہے اور جاپنیز اسٹینڈرڈ ہے تو یہ مختلف معیار اور پیمانے موجود ہیں تو آپ نے یہ یقین کر لینا کہ جب آپ بائی سیفٹی کیبنٹ خرید رہے ہیں تو اس پر کوئی نہ کوئی معیار لکھا ہوا ہوگا یا تو وہ یورپین اسٹینڈرڈ کے مطابق بنا ہوا ہوگا یا امیرکن اسٹینڈرڈ یا آسٹریلین یا جاپنیز اسٹینڈرڈ کچھ اہم نقطے جو ہم اور خریداری کرتے ہوئے ہم ہمارے دماغ میں ہونے چاہیے وہ کیا ہونے چاہیے کہ ہمیں بائی سیفٹی کیبنٹ کے اخراج کے لیے اگزاس کی ضرورت ہے ہماری کمرے کی ڈائمنشنس ہمارے پاس کتنی جگہ موجود ہے کیا ہمیں اس کے لیے اسٹینڈ چاہیے ٹھیک ہے یہ تمام چیزیں ہمیں کنسیڈر کرنی چاہیے تو سب سے پہلے دیکھتے ہیں کہ بائی سیفٹی کیبنٹ کے اخراج کے لیے آپ کے پاس کیا کیا آپشنز اویلیبل ہیں تو تین طرح کی اس میں آپشن اویلیبل ہیں پہلا آپشن کیا ہے کہ آپ جو بائی سیفٹی کیبنٹ سے اخراج ہو رہی ہے فلٹر ہو رہی ہے ہوا وہ آپ کی لیب میں ہی ری سرکولیٹ ہو جائے دوسرا آپشن آپ کے پاس یہ ہے تھمبل یا کینوپی جسے ہم ایک چھتری نما آلہ بھی کہہ سکتے ہیں کہ ایک چھتری سی ہے جو آپ کے بائی سیفٹی کیبنٹ کے اوپر موجود ہے اور وہ آپ کی جو اخراج ہے اس کو ڈائریکٹلی آپ کے روم سے آپ کی لیبارٹری سے باہر پھینک رہی ہے اور اس کے بعد تیسرا آپشن جو ہارڈ ڈکٹیڈ ہے جو کہ کافی فیمس ہوا کرتا تھا اور ابھی بھی میرے خیال میں کافی ساری لیبس میں موجود ہوں گے ہارڈ ڈکٹیڈ بائی سیفٹی کیبنٹ تو ایک بائی سیفٹی کیبنٹ کے اوپر سے ایک اسٹیل کی شافٹ یا ایک اسٹیل کا سا پائپ جا رہا ہوتا ہے جو کہ یا تو ایچ ویک کے ساتھ کنیکٹڈ ہوتا ہے یا وہ پھر ایسی ہوا میں جا رہا ہوتا ہے تو کچھ جگہ آڈر میں یہ بھی دیکھا کہ وہ صرف روم سے ہی باہر ہوتا ہے اور اس میں کبوتروں نے اور باقی دوسرے پرندوں نے اپنے گھونسلے بنائے ہوئے ہوتے ہیں اچھا اب ہم دیکھتے ہیں کہ اس میں نقصانات یا فائدہ کیا ہے اگر ہم فری ایگزاسٹ کرتے ہیں لیب میں تو کیا ہوگا تو اگر ہم بات کریں کلاس ون کلاس تھری اور کلاس ٹو اے کی یہ تینوں کے تینوں آپ کے لیب میں ایگزاسٹ کرتے ہیں ہیپا فلٹر کے بعد فلٹریشن کے بعد ٹھیک ہے اچھا اب اس میں ایک نقصان ہو سکتا ہے کہ اگر آپ کے ایس او پی میں یا جو آپ کام
इस तरह का कंपाउंड जिसकी जो ओडोर है जो उसका बदबू है वो आपकी काबिल बर्दाश्त नहीं है तो आप कम क्वांटिटीज में आप आ, आ, क्लास टू में काम क्लास टू बी टाइप में काम कर सकते हैं क्लास ए में ये होगा कि जब आपकी बाकी कैबिनेट्स अगर आपकी लैब में उसका अखराज करेंगे तो आपको बदबू फील हो रही है अच्छा अब अगर आप एस को क्लास टू ए को के साथ काम करना चाह रहे हैं और उसके साथ एक छतरी नुमा आला या कह लें कि इस तरह की कनेक्शन दे देते हैं तो आपका वही वाला काम हो जाएगा क्लास टू बी वाला कि अगर कोई भी चीज़ उसमें से बदबू भी है तो वो क्या करेगा कि वो डायरेक्टली वहाँ से सक करके आपकी लैब से बाहर वो आ, उसको खारिज कर देगा हार्ड डक्टिंग अगेन वहाँ रिक्वायर्ड होती है जैसे हम पहले दूसरी बात डिस्कस कर रहे हैं जहाँ पे आप बुखार के साथ या ऐसी चीज़ों के साथ जो कि बदबू पैदा करते हैं कीमिया उनके साथ अगर आप काम करें तो आपको हार्ड डक्टिंग की ज़रूरत होती है इसके नुकसान हैं इसके नुकसान एक तो ये हैं कि इसकी इंजीनियरिंग बहुत मुश्किल होती है ठीक है फिर आपका बैलेंस आउट हो सकता है अगर ये एच के साथ है यानी इसमें टर्बुलेंस आ सकती है कोई चीज़ अगर रूम का एग्जॉस्ट है वो इसके साथ इंटरफेयर कर सकता है इसके अलावा और जो नुकात हमें मद्देनज़र रखने हैं वो डायमेंशनस यानी हमारे पास जगह कितनी अवेलेबल है अगर हमारे पास जगह अवेलेबल है ज़्यादा हमारे कमरे में जहाँ पर हमें इसको रखना है बाई सेफ्टी कैबिनेट को तो डिफरेंट साइज़ अवेलेबल हैं तीन फिट का भी होता है चार फिट का भी होता है और छः फिट का भी होता है ठीक है इसके अलावा जो दूसरे अहम नुकते हैं वो ये है कि आपको स्टैंड चाहिए या आप उसको बेंच टॉप पे अपनी लैब में रखना चाहते हैं आपको इसके साथ अलार्म चाहिए यानी कि जब इसका प्रेशर आउट हो या जब इसका प्रेशर अटेन ना किया हो तो ये अलार्म दे रहा हो इसके अलावा आपको इलेक्ट्रिकल आउटलेट चाहिए बाई सेफ्टी कैबिनेट के अंदर या नहीं जैसे आज कल कोविड में ये होता है कि आप अगर मिनी सेंट्री भी रखना चाहेंगे कोई ऐसी चीज़ जहाँ पेरोसलाइजेशन हो रही है बहुत से लोग बाई सेफ्टी कैबिनेट के अंदर काम कर रहे होते हैं वेटेक्सिंग और इवन सेंट्रीफ्यूगेशन अगर मिनी सेंट्रीफ्यूज है या सेंट्रीफ्यूज के कप आप खोल रहे होते हैं तो अगर आपको इलेक्ट्रिकल आउटलेट चाहिए तो वो आप उसमें रखवा सकते हैं ठीक है यू वी लाइट का ऑप्शन होता है जो कि यूजली रिकमेंड नहीं किया जाता क्योंकि ये आपको फॉल्स सेंस ऑफ सेफ्टी दे रही होती है यू वी लाइट और इसके नुकसान ज़्यादा हैं और फ़ायदे कम हैं क्योंकि इसका चीज़ें काफ़ी मैटर करती हैं पुअर पुअर डिस है बेसिकली यू वी सो दैट्स ऑल फ्राम माई साइड नाउ ओवर टू यू फिली यू कैन कंटिन्यू Yes, thank you very much uh, for uh, for Ken. Um, can I have screen? Okay, yes. So actually, there, there were a few questions. First, uh, some someone proposed that uh, we should do the survey on on BS by safety cabinet again. It's coming, so you will get a survey and please answer. It's very useful for for us and for PEPSA to have a. Uh, a good view of the situation about uh, bio safety cabinets in pakistan there were also questions about uh, class a cabinet uh, yeah, uh, yeah class uh, sorry class 1 cabinets and how they are more protective and so on for that please refer to the session 1 so i will not answer those questions but uh, the slides will be available on the pepsa website so you can go back and then there were also uh, is true also for the functioning of epa failures for instance there were also a few questions on uh uv light and so why are not they are not recommended uh i put this slide here with where i put a number of, of reasons why they are not recommended first it's not something which is very efficient and the reasons are there also there is no good location inside of a by safety cabinet to have a, a short distance and to cover all the surface of the um, cabinet and because of that uh, i mean in many cases you have turbulences because of the of the bulb uh, of the of the light itself so it's not A good option. In any case, you will need the chemical decontamination, uh, and so it can be burns. And for those reasons, no safety cabinets. Part we first look at before it will be focused on. So the first thing to do is before installing, when you have when you receive your new cabinet, or even if it's donated, 
you should really have a visual inspection of the cabinet. And if it's not complete or damaged, damaged you should refuse it. I put this picture here just to show you. Uh, you see that there on the cabinet, there is a, there's a, there is a hole there. It might not be a problem because that's that's a negative pressure. It, it's not uh, necessarily in contact and so on. But if you have that, which has been probably caused during transport and so on, that means you would also have a, a number of problems with the inside of the biosafety cabinet. Uh, the electronics might be damaged. The gaskets of the HEPA filters might be damaged. So if it's not totally nice out, outside, you might have other problems. But also the fact that this can occur that also shows that we need to check about all those components. And I will come back on this a little bit later. So uh, why is location so critical for class two biosafety cabinet? Just remember this, this picture. This, at this level, of, uh, there is a, a, very, uh, a very strong impact of, of all air movements inside or outside the cabinet. And so if there, are some, there is some air disturbance from the outside here, you will lose protection. The air will not go in, but go out. And of course, this is a problem. So uh, the issue of location is that when you install a class two biosafety cabinet, you need to put it in a, in a, seat, in a location that avoid the risk of disturbance of the air barrier and, and, and thus compromising protection. So you should, should put it away from doors, away from passage, so not at the beginning of a lab, because in that case, people really will travel behind you when, when you when you handle. Uh, of course, not in front of windows that may open. If it's too hot, we open the window, and that, of course, create, creates air movement. You could lose all your protection from that. And also away from any type of ventilation devices. Also, you should keep them away from the, the air supply grills and blowing devices. One thing which is interesting to note is that an exhaust grill is totally okay. There is no interference at all. And if if you want to to visualize this, just imagine a candle. You you can you try to blow it off. You can to extinguish that uh, the the flame there. You can do it very easily with little energy in blowing. If you suck, it's almost impossible to 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 extinguish. It. So. It's the same with the air movement in, in the lab. If it's an exhaust, you can you can you don't disturb the air. If it's a supply uh, of air, in that case, you will disturb the air flow. Just an example of poor location: the biosafety cabinet here, and you have there a, an air supply grill. And because the cooling was not enough, they add this kind of, of uh, split unit, and that really blows cold air towards that direction that cabinet has a lot of chance to be disturbed. That's one of the reasons why you need to check the functioning of your cabinet at installation and with your ventilation on. Sorry, oops. If you test it and that you see that there are some problems, you can still find some solution, either move the cabinet in another place, and if it's not possible, you can put some kind of screen there to deviate the air so that it does not, not disturb the, the cabinet. But in order to be able to do that, you need to test it first. And that uh, brings up to, to the checking. You need to check the cabinet immediately after installation. And that's, that's necessary to make sure that the functioning of the BSC is still perfectly OK, despite the transport and handling and the cabinets which are sold in Pakistan, they have traveled by boat, by, by, by truck and so on. So there might be some damage. And also that ver verify to check that it operates properly at the place where it has been located. And so that means that that checking has to be done uh, with the air conditioning on, with the ventilation on and so on. But this initial testing is not always done, but it's something which is very important and it should be part of the supp supplying service. So the vendor should be able to supply you this service, either themselves or to a contractor. So servicing uh, thing of a biosafety, though servicing means checking, so the certification and maintenance. When do we have to do field certification or recertification, meaning the certification in the lab? 
I said at installation, and this is necessary, but if also if you move the bike safety cabinet, if you move it from one room to another, or if you, even if you move it in the room. Why? Because it, the location with respect to the uh, ventilation will not be the same anymore. It has done on a regular basis, usually it's done yearly, in some cases because of a high risk or because there are much use, it can be done every six months. And it has to be done before and after maintenance. Before, usually people who do the maintenance, they test before to see what they need to replace. But if they replace something, it also, or if they modify some setting, it also has to be done after, so that we are check, uh, sure that, uh, that the checking was good and that the, the result of the modification is good. It's especially true if we change the HEPA filters. We need to be sure that they are well in place and that the gaskets are perfectly uh, airtight. Who should do that? Some engineer, some person with the right competences, but also which has uh, good equipment. It's quite sophisticated equipment, for instance, to measure the airflow. So those people have to have that equipment and to have they have to know what they are doing. It has to be done in normal condition, and that's very important. That means that if you have a ventilation system in your lab, it should be done with the ventilation system working. And if you use a large equipment inside of your bio safety cabinet, it has to be done with the large equipment in, so that you can check the impact of that large equipment on the airflow. And normally it should be done according to uh, the standards that we mentioned before. You see here different types uh, of activities. Uh, actually, testing at least need to have those four, uh, uh, those four uh, items checked. First, the basic function. If there is an alarm, we need to be sure that the alarm is functioning and that it's, it's, it's being triggered at the right moment. So we need to be sure that the measurements are, are OK. So it has to be calibrated. It has to be checked. Filter integrity. The protection relies largely on the HEPA filters. If the filters, there, is a, there are some holes in the filters, or if the gaskets are damaged, in that case, they will not protect you anymore. So it is very important to check this. The airflow velocity, so the, the speed, if you want, of the airflow also have to be checked, and that is what is done here. Uh, because, especially with class two, you have a very sensitive balance and that's related to the airflow velocities. If you have a modification of that, you might not be protected anymore. And then finally, the airflow patterns. That means the, the movement of the air. And you can do that using some, some type of device that uh, produce some, uh, some smoke. That's not a measurement, so you need to have some video or some pictures to illustrate, to document what you've done. This picture in the middle is scanning a HEPA filter to see uh, if there are no holes. Then other things could be checked, but it's not so essential, like the light intensity and so on. And there might there, there are some other systems available, but normally not recommended. I would already be very happy if these four basic testing were done on all the biosafety cabinets in Pakistan. That would be wonderful. Maintenance. Actually, uh, maintenance is really <coughs> by safety always related to, to checking, and most of the time the maintenance is done after the checking. Actually, with respect to biosafety cabinet, there is no preventive maintenance, so we don't do a maintenance of check, changing things and so on just because there is a date. We do it after checking, and we only replace things that need to be uh, changed because of uh, because the results of the checking are not good. It's specifically true for HEPA filters. Some vendors will say that you have to change the filters every year or every two years. It's totally false. It doesn't make sense. Actually, HEPA filters, as long as they filter the air, as long as they are in place, even if there are more particles inside, they, will, they won't lose any efficacy. They will even be more efficient. efficacious. They will retain more particles, so you don't need to change HEPA filters according to dates. The only reason to change HEPA filters, uh, and that's true for biosafety cabinet, oh, also, yeah. the only reason is that it is if you have if the filters are damaged or if the um, gasket are damaged. In that case, they will let some uh, particles escape, and in that case, of course, you need to either repair, it's sometimes possible, or replace them. And the other uh, reason for changing a HEPA filter is if uh, 
there are so much dust inside of the filter that finally uh, there is not enough air going through. And that on all the modern biosafety cabinets, you have the, the alarm and they will also measure the airflow velocity and so on. But don't let people change your uh, EPA filters uh, preventively. It's only in the situation that they need to be changed. And actually, EPA filters on biosafety cabinet can last from three to more than 10 years. Three years, it would be in a very dusty environment, but most of the time labs are not dusty environment. So you can keep uh, uh, EPA filters for a long time. Also, we need to realize that the cost of HEPA filters, and you see a class two biosafety cabinet, there are two HEPA filters, it's about 30% of the cost of a biosafety cabinet. So if you change them every year, after three years, it's the same thing as uh, buying a new, a new cabinet. Housekeeping. Uh, the main thing is routine decontamination. It has to be done. Um, it has to be done regularly. Things that should also be done is checking the pressure indicator of your biosafety cabinet. That should be done before starting to work. work a work surface should be uh, decontaminated before working to protect, uh, protect the product, but also after the work session. And in that case, it's more for biosafety reason. Uh, you also, uh, and that's, oh yeah, there's uh, the last line there, I'm sorry. Also in case of a spill, if or, there is a, an incident in the biosafety cabinet, you have some spill. In that case, you need to immediately do the cleanup. So decontamination and cleaning all the surface that have been exposed, including the, ba the basin that is under the work surface. For that, please keep the biosafety cabinet running. It has to be to stay on. If you turn it off, you will lose your protection. So at, in that situation, it's extremely important to keep it working. And then weekly or monthly, depending on the frequency of use, you need to have a more in-depth decontamination of all the surfaces, uh, including the window and including the retention ba basin. Last thing about decontamination, and that's not done by you, it has to be done by the supplier of the maintenance and, and checking services. In some situation, I mean, high risk situation, like in BSL3 labs and so on, you might need to decontaminate the biosafety cabinet before the technician work on, it, uh, on, on the cabinets. In BSL3 labs, most of the time it's very easy because you can decontaminate the room with uh, formaldehyde, hydrogen peroxide. In that case, when you proceed to the decontamination of the room, you turn the cabinets on, and in that case, the decontaminating product will go to the filter and they will be completely decontaminated. If not, then there are two options. With most recent cabinets, you can close the opening here and inject the hydrogen peroxide or formaldehyde inside of the inside of the cabinet, and and have it recirculated uh, through the cabinet and to the filters. Not all the suppliers have that. If you need to decontaminate the cabinet and you don't have that, your supplier does not have that. In that case, it's also possible to do it in wrapping the cabinet in a a uh, thick plastic sheet. So this is also possible. But this is not necessary for all situation. It's only on for high risk situation. And so you need to, to do some kind of risk assessment to know if you need this. So Fukan, could you please also translate, uh, summarize this part, please? Yeah, sure. Thank you. So, इस निश्चित में हम किस्तुगु कर रहे हैं तंसीब के बारे में कि biosafety cabinet की तंसीब किस तरह की जाए। तो सबसे पहले जब आप तंसीब करने से पहले भी एक अमल है जो कि है inspection का कि आपने check करना है कि आपका जो biosafety cabinet आपको receive हुआ है, वो कहीं से कोई उसपे तोड़ फोड़ तो नहीं हुई भी है, कोई नुकसान तो नहीं हुआ है। इस इमेज में तस्वीर में आप देख सकते हैं कि एक टूर कि फिजिकली जो है बायोसेफ्टी कैबिनेट वो बिल्कुल सही सलामत है लोकेशन या इसकी जगह कि कहां इसकी तंसीब होनी है कहां इंस्टॉलेशन होनी है तो वो ये आप देखेंगे कि लैब में जहां पर आपकी इसकी फंक्शनलिटी का आपको पता होना चाहिए इसकी फंक्शनलिटी क्या है इन तस्वीरों में आपको इसकी परफोरेटेड ग्रिल्स या सुराख वाली जाली नजर आ रही है 
तो होता ये है कि जब आपकी जो रूम एयर होती है वो ये सक करती है और ऑपरेटर को एक तरीके से तहफ़ फराम कर रही होती है और फिर इसके अंदर इसका जो लेमिनार फ्लो होता है वो आपकी प्रोडक्ट को तहफ़ फराम कर रहा होता है और अगर आप एक वो नीले वाला एरो देखें तो वो आपके इन्वायरमेंट को तहफ़ फराम कर रहा होता है क्योंकि जो भी एयर है बायोसेफ्टी कैबिनेट से बाहर खारिज हो रही होती है वो फिल्टर के थ्रू फिल्टर होकर खारिज हो रही होती है तो इसकी जो लोकेशन है जगह है वो बहुत सोच समझ के इसको रखना चाहिए क्योंकि वरना इसकी जो फालियत है वो मुतासर होती है कहाँ रखना चाहिए सवाल ही पैदा होता है तो इसकी जो जगह है वो दरवाज़ों से दूर होना चाहिए कोई ऐसा एरिया ना हो जहाँ पे लोगों की बहुत ज़्यादा आमदो रफ्त हो यानी कोई पैसेज ना हो जहाँ पे लोग आते जाते रहते हो कोई ऐसी खिड़की ना हो जो खुलती हो और ऐसी कोई वेंटिलेशन डिवाइस फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर एयर कंडीशन लगा हुआ है रूम में या किसी लैब में एच सिस्टम है हीटिंग वेंटिलेशन एयर कंडीशनिंग सिस्टम तो उनकी कुछ सप्लाईज होती हैं और कुछ एग्जॉस्ट होती हैं तो सप्लाई के नीचे ना रखा हो इस खाके में आप देख सकते हैं कि बाई सेफ्टी कैबिनेट रखा है उल्टे हाथ पे और सीधे हाथ पे आपको दो चीज़ें नजर आ रही हैं जो कि इसको इसकी जो फालियत है उसको मुतासर कर सकती हैं पहला तो एयर कंडीशनर है ठीक है इसमें से भी एक सप्लाई हो सकती है एयर जो है वो ब्लो होगी जब वो एयर ब्लो होगी तो जो इसका एयर कर्टन है इसमें एक एयर कर्टन होता है बाई सेफ्टी कैबिनेट में जो कि हमें हमारी प्रोडक्ट को और हमारे इन्वायरमेंट को प्रोटेक्शन प्रोवाइड कर रहा होता है ठीक है तो एयर कंडीशन जो है वो भी इसकी जो फालियत है उसको मुतासर कर सकता है और ऊपर एक सप्लाई वेंट नजर आ रही है जो कि जहाँ से एयर सप्लाई होती है एयर दी जाती है तो वो भी इसकी फालियत को मुतासर कर सकते हैं तो हम क्या कर सकते हैं हम ये कर सकते हैं कि अगर ये एयर सप्लाई को हम पार्शली ब्लॉक कर दें तो हम इसको आते कुछ टेप लगा के किसी चीज़ से हम इसको ब्लॉक कर दें तो एयर सप्लाई थोड़ी कम हो जाएगी और बाई सेफ्टी कैबिनेट की जो फालियत है उस पर इतना फ़र्क नहीं पड़ेगा तनसीब के बाद सबसे पहले आपने क्या देखना है आपने देखना है कि सही तरीके से काम कर रहा है आपका बाई सेफ्टी कैबिनेट ठीक है सर्विसिंग या देखभाल क्या क्या करनी चाहिए सर्टिफिकेशन इसकी कब कब ज़रूरत होती है सबसे पहली सर्टिफिकेशन जब आप इसको इंस्टॉल करते हैं या तनसीब करते हैं उस वक्त ज़रूरी होती है उसके बाद आपको एक अपना स्केचुअल बनाना होता है कि हम इसको सालाना या छः माह या छः महीने के बाद कराएंगे उसके बाद अगर जब आपका हेपा फिल्टर चेंज होता है बायो सेफ्टी कैबिनेट का तब भी इसकी सर्टिफिकेशन रिक्वायर्ड होती है कौन करेगा एक मजाज या मुतल जो भी अमला है वो इसकी सर्टिफिकेशन करेगा ठीक है और इसकी सर्टिफिकेशन के लिए भी अगेन कुछ मैार मौजूद हैं जो कि यूरोपियन और अमेरिकन है सर्टिफिकेशन के दौरान क्या क्या चीज़ चेक की जाती है इस तो इसकी जो एक बेसिक फंक्शनैलिटी है जिसमें अलार्म और बाकी चीज़ें होते हैं वो चीज़ चेक की जाती है फिल्टर देखा जाता है कि फ़िल्टर कहीं से लीक नहीं है चौक नहीं है हवा का बहाव एयर फ्लो वेलोसिटी को देखा जाता है उसके पैटर्न को देखा जाता है और पैटर्न को आप स्मोक टेस्ट से तस्वीर में देख सकते हैं और वेलोसिटी के कुछ मीटर्स होते हैं जिससे एयर फ्लो वेलोसिटी इसकी देखी जा सकती है इसके अलावा ये देखा जाता है कि इसकी में जो लाइट लगी हुई है उसकी इंटेंसिटी कितनी है जो वाइट लाइट लगी है उसकी इंटेंसिटी कितनी है उसकी शिद्दत कम है या ज़्यादा है आप सही तरीके से काम कर सकते हैं नॉइस कितना प्रोड्यूस कर रहा है क्योंकि जब लोअर चलता है बाई सेफ्टी कैबिनेट में जो लोग काम करते हैं उनको अंदाजा होगा कि लोअर की अपना आवाज होती है तो अगर हद से ज्यादा उसकी शोर पैदा कर रहा है इसका मतलब है इसमें कोई मसला है इसके अलावा जो इसकी मेंटेनेंस है जो देखभाल है वो सर्टिफिकेशन जब आप इसकी करवाते हैं उसी वक्त होगी और आपको कोई रूटीन में इसकी कोई सारिफ पर ऐसी कोई जिम्मेदारी नहीं है कि वो इसकी रूटीन में जो है इसकी देखभाल खुद करे या हेपा फिल्टर चेंज करे ये मुतल लोग ही कर रहे होते हैं रोज़मर्रा के कामों में आप जो कर सकते हैं वो जो सारिफ कर सकता है या यूज़र कर सकता है वो ये कर सकता है कि अपना प्रेशर का जो आला है इस पर प्रेशर इंडिकेटर होता है वो देख सकता है कि वो अपनी रीडिंग से आगे बढ़ रहा है क्योंकि जिस तरीके से लोड होगा हैपा फिल्टर तो इसमें रीडिंग आगे बढ़ती है और फिर आपके पास एक उसमें सर्टिफिकेशन का जो स्टिकर होगा उस पर उसकी वैल्यूज़ लिखी हुई होती हैं वो आप उससे भी चेक कर सकते हैं डिकनटेमिनेशन करनी होती है बाई सेफ्टी कैबिनेट वो काम करने से पहले भी और काम करने के बाद भी और अगर आप इसकी सर्विस के लिए भेज रहे हैं बाई सेफ्टी कैबिनेट को तो ये हम सब की जिम्मेदारी है कि अगर आप इंजीनियरिंग को बुला रहे हैं इंजीनियरिंग के लिए भिजवा रहे हैं इसको तो आपने इसको खुद डी कंटेमिनेट करना है क्योंकि जो इंजीनियर है उसको नहीं पता कि आप इस पर किन किन पैथोजन के साथ काम कर सकते हैं ठीक है क्या करते हैं तो आपकी रिस्क असमेंट बताएगी कि कौन सा डिसइनफेक्टेंट आपके पैथोजन के लिए बहुत ज़रूरी है तो आप उसी से इसको डी कन, करेंगे ठीक है जो कॉमनली यूज है वो फॉर्मल और हाइड्रोजन पर से इसको यूजली डी किया जाता है और उसके बाद फिर आप इंजीनियर को कॉल करते हैं और वो इसकी सर्विसिंग वगैरह करते हैं सो दैट्स ऑल फ्रॉम माय साइड नाउ फिलिप यू कैन टेक ओवर एंड हैव वी कैन हैव क्वेश्चन आंसर सेशन
Uh, thank you very much, for uh, Thank you. And I also saw that you answer a number of, of questions to the chat box, and uh, I thank you for that also, uh, because there are many questions. A very, a very interesting question, actually. Uh, and, and But uh, now it's time to close, so we, I won't an answer any more those questions, but thank you for, for Ken to have responded on them. Uh, a few Thank questions. Uh, a few questions will be answered during the next session because we'll speak about how to use the biosafety cabinet. So the, the time to to turn it on before working and so on that we'll will we'll present next time. And also for the, all the other questions that will be dealt with during uh, session four. So session four, the last session of this uh, webinar will be devoted to answering uh, all your other questions. So. Don't worry, I don't answer them now, but I will certainly do it during for, uh, session four. So thank you very much for your question. Thank you very much for your attention. And hopefully, uh, I, I, I hope you will be there uh, uh, next time and during the fourth session. So thank you again. Thank you.